This is a pair of Nike Vaporfly Next Percents, and they are fast as f 2023 didn't have the best start. I DNF'd at Tarawira because I went out like an idiot. I then had high hamstring tendinopathy, and I didn't have the best run ever at Ultra Trail Australia and Katoomba in April. On the other hand, we are now seven days after the Auckland Marathon, which I went under three hours for the marathon for the first time. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the things I did differently in training in terms of race nutrition and race preparation for this result that has taken me years of preparation and training to get to. This is a fairly typical training week for me. So I would take Monday off, I would do strength and mobility training all seven days in the week, and the rest of the week would you know, consist of aerobic sessions with a couple of workouts. So I'd have a slightly hillyish run, but still kept done at an aerobic pace on a Wednesday. I would do some kind of intervals on a Thursday, in this case, 800 meter intervals. Friday would be a little bit of an easier day, then Saturday strides, and then finally on Sunday, the classic long run with some time spent at marathon or maybe just slightly faster than marathon pace. So nothing desperately unusual here. Now, um, in previous training sessions, I would run seven days a week and not have a Monday off. And I'd do some kind of lactate threshold intervals on a Tuesday. So instead of doing three workouts a week, I'm only doing two. Um, that was offset to a degree by every single one of my long runs, of which there were seven runs over 32k, and I think I peaked at 35 and a half kilometers. Each of those would contain 10 to 20 kilometers of marathon paced running. That's a really, really big aerobic stimulus, so having that day off on Monday allowed me to recover. Now, training didn't go amazingly. Now, this week was a good week. I've hit all of my sessions, and you can see on a couple of days I've gone a little bit over because I was feeling good and fresh. If we just look a little bit further down, we can see I've missed a few sessions here. Now, this was because I started to get insomnia. I don't think it was from overtraining because my volumes were actually lower than I'd done previously in my last marathon training block. Um, I think it might have been work stress, I'm not quite sure. But certainly for about a week and a half, um, I really wasn't quite recovering from the workouts. And in these circumstances, it's just much better to back off and try and get yourself in, back into some kind of rhythm. So overall, fewer workouts, maybe slightly lower volume, but I p pursued each of those workouts really, really thoroughly. Case in point, if we look at uh, this week, I did the classic Yasso 800 session, which is where you do a warm up, you do 10 by 800 meter intervals in equivalent time. So if you want to do a three hour marathon, you need to do these in three minutes, and then you get the same amount of time, easy recovery between the intervals. If we take a look at that session, you can see here that my warm up was fine. My intervals are right in the sort of 544 minutes per mile, which is what um, it's 340-ish, 335-ish per kilometer. So that's really fairly brisk. And I managed all 10 well within the time. And in fact, I did them in an average of 253, 254. So that's really, really good. Now, um, the ASO 800 is kind of a bit of a debate about it. Is it a really good marathon predictor? Not really. But on the other hand, if you can't do uh, 10 by 800 each in under three minutes, it's a pretty fair bet that you're not going to be able to manage to do a marathon in under three hours. So that's a positive sign, but not definitive. Still, really, really, really heartening workout. Um, going into the taper, my taper was, was kind of reasonably normal. Um, I would back off on volume, but I'm still running the num same number of sessions, but I do shorter and fewer intervals. So I did eight by 400 here, and I think I did six by 400 there. So that's a much, much lower volume than when I peaked at 10 by 800. Um, similarly, my long run at the weekend went down to 90 minutes in place of two hours 45 or thereabouts. So again, nothing desperately groundbreaking. Now, I also did a couple of things different in terms of preparation for this race. Um, one was carb load, which we'll talk about, and also was nitrate load, which is an interesting one. So the carb load, uh, in the final two days before the race, I tried to get in 10 grams per kilogram of body weight of carbohydrate. Now, that works at about 670 grams of carbs, 660 grams of carbs. That is an enormous amount of carbohydrate and is very difficult to do. And effectively meant every day was porridge for breakfast, mid-morning carby snack, 
lunch with pasta on the side, mid-afternoon carby snack, dinner with pasta on the side, and then a carby snack before bedtime, making sure to have plenty of water as well. I felt very bloated by the Saturday evening, which was the final of the, the two-day carb load. Um, but actually going into Sunday morning, I really felt quite good, like I digested. I did feel maybe slightly heavy because you retain a lot of water with that stored carbohydrate, but I did feel that it helped on race day. The other thing I did was a nitrate load. Now this is an interesting one. Certain leafy vegetables and also beetroot contain lots of nitrate. Previous studies have shown that uh, ingestion of nitrate um, improves running economy in untrained runners. But also there was a recent study where they did, um, and it was done with cycling rather than running, but the benefits should hold out, um, two uh, doses of 375 millimoles for four or five days before a race. Now for someone like me, that works out at 250 mil of beet juice made from uh, concentrate, and I used pure endurance fuel, I think it was, and I'd have a glass in the morning and a glass in the evening. And I did that from the Wednesday morning through to my final glass was at like three o'clock in the morning on Sunday when I got up to have breakfast before race day. Now, um, I can't say definitively whether either of these things helped because I did lots of other things as well. You see, my training was different. But I do feel that given the result on the day, maybe it just gave me that little bit of an extra edge that I could carry through. Just looking at my marathon on Strava, we can see that I finished in 2.57.56 gun time, which was 2.57.53 chip time. So two minutes under three hours, really, really happy with that at a pace of 4.11 per kilometre, which really chuffed. Uh, the race was slightly long, but that seems to be pretty typical with Auckland. Everyone seems to come out at about 46.4 to 46.5 kilometres, nothing unusual there. Now, what is slightly different about Auckland is nearly all of the hills uh, are in, there's the Harbour Bridge obviously, but nearly all of the hills are in the first six kilometres or so. And so I set myself a rule that in the first maybe hour to hour and a quarter of the race, I absolutely would not go over about 95% of lactate threshold heart rate, and that's 174 for me. So 95% of that is about 165, 166, so I would not go over that. Um, if I go down and switch on my heart rate, you can see I get pretty close. Oh, there was a 169, I think, there for a second. Yeah, just a little bit there. Um, 166 there. And so every time I got close to that, I would just, just, just back off. And you can see my heart rate very quickly gets back down into the, the high 150s, low 160s every time we, we reach a downhill. Similarly, on the Harbour Bridge, I got up to about 166 and then on Shelley Beach Road. And then we got through to the flat. Now, I would just let myself drift off the back of the, the three-hour pace group simply because I know I'm going to catch them up. They never got more than maybe 100 metres maximum in front of me, probably more like 50. So it was quite easy for me to catch them up on uh, before we went back underneath the harbour bridge and then went out on the, the waterfront. Now, I was really keen to do this because when we got the ferry over to Devonport first thing in the morning, it was blowing a hoolie from the east, so we would be running into the wind, running along uh, the, the, the waterfront towards the turnaround and so I wanted to be in that group and get some shelter from the wind. Now as it turned out the wind wasn't anywhere near as bad as it was first thing in the morning so actually we were able to maintain a good pace. Um, in terms of nutrition I was using uh, drinks bottles that I had at every other aid station and I'll talk about the mix I was using later and we kind of reached one here where I couldn't find my bottle. Turns out an awful lot of people use those 400 meter pump bottles for their nutrition in marathons. So make sure you decorate them better than I did and you won't have to stop for three seconds going, where's my bottle? Um, but at one of the later later stations, I think about Mission Bay, I didn't have a bottle and lots of people from the three hour pace group stopped to, 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 to take on water and I opened up a little bit of a gap. Um, that worried me slightly. You can see I started to slow down a bit to maybe let them try and catch up with me, but they never quite did. And I started opening up a little bit of a gap heading out on Tamaki Drive. And then at the turnaround, I, I, I felt good, I have to say. The last time I ran Auckland, I really got a case of jelly legs and bonked really hard just after the turnaround. I dropped off the back of the, the three hour pace group. But here I didn't. I spent a lot of time waiting for that to happen, but it, it just never did. And so I was able to carry on going. And then finally, when we get to about three kilometers to go, and I was running with my friend Thomas Watson, who also went under three, congratulations, Thomas, I felt able to start to push the pace. And you can see me gradually pick it up 
pick it up to about four minutes a K and then I just absolutely threw it down um, for the last, you know, sort of 319 sprint sprint to the finish. And I came in in effectively a little bit under 258. So absolutely, absolutely chuffed with the result all around. In terms of nutrition, I was using uh, Morton 320 drink mix and uh, there's 320 calories in there and you put that into 500 mils of water, mix really thoroughly. Each of my bottles uh, had 250 mils of water, so 160 calories in, and I had seven bottles of which I drank six. So that's 950, 960 calories over the course of three hours. That's really quite a lot of carbs, but I think that that really helped again with the carb load and the nitrate load to making sure I just didn't have any kind of bonk. In terms of shoes, I was wearing a pair of uh, Nike Vaporfly Next Percents. Um, these were a pristine pair I bought on special um, at Dress Smart ages ago. Um, I knew that they would work for me. They're identical, apart from the colour, to the pair I ran Christchurch. And so I've kept these around for that next, next sub three marathon effort. And they serve me really, really well. And they're going to go back into a box until I kind of decide I want to go and do some, some road racing again. So it's been five years since I first started out on this journey. I'm incredibly happy with where we've ended up. Um, and yeah, I take deep, deep satisfaction from, from the result on the day. And congratulations to you know, all of the other folks. Uh, Shiva Prashad, who I met from the Marathon Sub Three Hour group, uh, my friend Thomas Watson, um, and all of the other people who, who went under three hours on the day. Um, temperature was good, wind wasn't as bad as we thought, so even despite the hills, just a really satisfying result. So now, what next? Uh, I'm waiting for the Western States Lottery, which is on the 2nd of December, and that will more or less determine what my summer looks like and what my 2024 is going to look like if I finally get into the race and I'm with five years in the lottery, still about 15% chance of getting picked. It's still not likely, so I will probably be going back to do something like Tarawera, um, probably have a holiday back to see my family in the UK in the summer, probably go for some running in the Lake District, and then I'll do something in um, sort, of, sort of spring next year. I quite like the look of the Hunua Hillbilly. That seems really, really fun, but also the Topo 100K, fantastic race, um, really enjoyable, nice, easy, quick trails. So I hope you're making progress towards your goals and you're really looking forward to a summer of fantastic running, be that on the roads, on the trails, on the track. Hope you're doing really well, guys and gals. Speak to you soon.